Ezekiel 31. All right, tonight's teaching is going to be very interesting. I'm going to be covering why trees are important to the devil and to the demonic realm and what that has to tie to the Bohemian Grove, what that has to do with pagan rituals, the Celtic Druids, and then the owl and stuff like that. It's going to be very, very interesting stuff. All right, let's close with the word of prayer and go home. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 31. Ezekiel chapter 31. Why is the tree important to Satan? It's very, very easy. He was one. That's why. So the reason why trees are very important to Satan is because he used to be one. That's the reason why trees are important to Satan. What kind of tree was Satan a part of back then? Do you not know? It's called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The tree of sin. The tree of sin and death where Adam and Eve partook in its fruit. That's why they became children of the devil. Why? They partook in the devil's fruit. So then the devil's fruits that came out, his lineage and children that came out, see that? When Adam and Eve partook in that, they became the children of the devil, child of the devil. And that's the reason why you and I partook in that sinful nature until Jesus Christ had to do something. But let's go one by one. Ezekiel chapter 31. Notice that the Bible says, when we read verse 8, verse 8, the cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches. Look at the wording here. Nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto his beauty. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. There's no doubt this is referring to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What we know is this is referring to the devil. You might say, why? Because of verse 8. Garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. And if you know Ezekiel 28, we won't go there for time's sake. Ezekiel 28 is the devil where no one was likened unto his beauty as a cherub. So all you have to do is compare Ezekiel 31 and Ezekiel 28, and the wording there matches, and you know that has to be referring to Lucifer. But notice, uh, if you're familiar with Ezekiel 28, God says, no one was like to you in your beauty, but because of your pride, I had to cast you down to hell. And the wording right here is given. Notice at verse 16, I made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall, just like the fall of the devil, right? The fall of Lucifer. When I cast him down to hell with them that descend into the pit. That's very close to Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14's wording about the fall of Lucifer, right? And all the trees of Eden, the choice and best of Lebanon, all that drink water shall be comforted in the nether parts of the earth. They also went down into hell with him. So as I've taught you last time, that possibly the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the other trees in the Garden of Eden, they could have went down to hell. So, so there's a thought right there why Satan wanted Adam and Eve to fall. He wanted to get the garden for himself. He wanted to get the garden for himself. So the tree is important to Satan. Why? Because he is a tree. He's likened to a tree. Now, this is extremely interesting about Satan being a tree. If he's a tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and this is where we kind of get deep, and I won't get really deep into this teaching because I've taught you many times. What was the fruit that Adam and Eve ate, if you recall in my previous teachings? It was grape. It was grape out of a vine. Well, there's no such thing as a vine tree. Well, no, if you look at the Bible, there is such a thing as a vine tree. But if you look at his, uh, I told you this too in my Genesis studies, so you just have to go to my Genesis studies, and I'll tell you this. But in my Genesis studies, what I've showed you, which was extremely interesting, is that it's possible that this vine can go along this tree. And that, remember, the Bible calls this a cedar tree, right? So then it could be that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is a cedar tree, but that there are vines surrounding it, and then grapes are growing out of it. But, think about this, okay? If the grape is the devil's fruit, 
All right, and take that for granted. I'm not going to show you the verses on that one, all right? Because there's plenty of verses we have to cover, right? All right, this is deep stuff. This is deep stuff. So, <coughs> excuse me. If this is a vine and grapes are growing out of it, and this vine tangles around the cedar tree, as I've taught you in my previous Genesis studies, it would make sense why Satan would tempt Adam and Eve to partake in the fruit of the tree if he was nearby it as a... Look at this vine. It's like a serpent. You see that right there? It's kind of like a serpent. But anyway, let's uh, look at Genesis 3, right? Genesis 3. He was on this tree tempting Eve if the devil was like a snake back then, if he was this animal snake, it would make sense why he was a part of the tree. Why he was a part of the tree. Okay, let's look at uh, Genesis chapter 3. Notice that with this tree, he was right there. Genesis chapter 3. The serpent, right? He's called a serpent on a tree. All right, remember that. He was a serpent. On a tree. Brother Sean, don't connect words now, all right? <laughs> Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So see, the serpent was right there, tempting Eve to partake in this tree. If this is Satan, the serpent, and the tree is referring to Satan, this is all Satan right here. So that's why Satan would prize a tree. If this snake was on a tree, did you, rem uh, did you read Ezekiel 31? What was this tree boasting? This tree was boasting, and you can read Ezekiel 31, it was boasting about its height, how tall it was. Mm, do you remember what Lucifer uh, said? You know, I will go above the heights. I want to be tall. I would be like the Most High. What did God do with this serpent who wanted to be tall? What did he say? If he was a snake, then Genesis chapter 3, you're going to crawl on your belly. You're going to eat dust. You're not going to be a tree. See that? Look at Genesis chapter 3. And notice verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. So notice right here, he was high above like a tree, but now he's sludging around the bottom. How about that? So God's like, you're not going to go high, you're going to go low. You're going to go low. And it's where the dust is. It's where the dust is. The dust? Hmm. So he's not the nice little vine tree that you see anymore. He is something else. He's where the dust is. If I said dust, what tree would be close to the dust? Well, what did God say? Look at uh, the book of Genesis 3. When he cursed the land because of sin, he said at verse 18, thorns also and thistles, right? All right, go to the book of Judges. Judges. Judges, okay? Judges. He, so Satan lost his tree position, being tall and high. Why? Because it goes up. But he's going now to thorns and bramble bush. Oh, nice. All right. There's no doubt that the Bible sees this one as something negative, as something connected to evil or the Antichrist. All right? Why? Because it's below. But then trees he sees as something connected to heaven or something good. You don't think it's connected to the Antichrist? No, look at the book of Judges. Connects it to uh, the Antichrist right here. Look at the book of Judges, chapter... Let's see right here. Chapter, seven, uh, chapter 9. Judges, chapter 9. Abimelech 
is a type of the Antichrist. And Abimelech, the type of the Antichrist, is likened to that bramble bush and thorns. All right, let's look at Judges chapter 9. Verse, uh, we won't read this for time's sake, but notice that there were... Tr uh, the story is that the trees want to pick a king. And then verses 8 all the way to verse 16 is referring to the trees trying to pick a king. They want to go to the olive tree, be our king, but the olive tree is no. And that's a positive tree. You'll notice the story makes it a positive tree. God used the olive likened to the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, the fig tree, verse 10, and, uh, 10 through 12, it's used as a positive thing, this tree, in this story. And you'll know that God likens Israel to the fig tree. Verse 13 through 14, the vine tree is likened to a positive tree in this story. And Jesus Christ uses the fruit of the vine to represent and symbolize his blood. And then verse 15, notice that it's, uh, it's indicated negatively in this story. And the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. So notice right here that the bramble bush is used as something as negative. As something that's negative. Oh, should I turn to that verse or use that last? I'll use that last, okay? So just keep that in mind that this is connected to where Satan is now. He's no longer here, right? He's no longer here. He's here, okay? So that serpent is going on the ground, eating dust, where what? The thorns, the bramble, and bramble bush, and all that is, it's all below. But uh, let's see now. If that's what Satan did and that tree is cursed, and remember, we took his lineage, right? We took his lineage. We, be, we were the children of the devil. But look what the Bible does if we look at the book of John chapter 3. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And then we're going to look at the book of... Galatians. We're going to look at the book of Galatians, chapter 2. Galatians. And then we're going to look at chapter 2. Galatians chapter 3, excuse me. We're going to look at Galatians 3 and John 3. Galatians 3 and John chapter 3. So then, if that's what happened to us, we were a children of the devil. Because why? Because we partook in his uh, fruit, became the children of sin. So Jesus Christ had to do something. You know what Jesus Christ had to do? I'll tell you what he had to do. The Lord Jesus Christ, he had to take the curse that you and I were a part of. He had to take part of the curse and to ha had to do what? He had to be basically what? That serpent yes. hung on a tree wow. to replace what? This serpent on a tree. Amen. Oh, that's, that's what Jesus Christ had to do. Why? Because this is considered to be a curse. So Jesus Christ became a curse for us. Remember, the serpent was cursed, right? To become like this? Curse. You know, <coughs> Adam and Eve, they became, they became cursed from this tree. Guess what this wood is? It's a curse. Alright, you don't believe me. Look at the book of Galatians chapter 3. Verse 13. Verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Look at right there. Jesus Christ had to become a curse for us. Why? Because something's hanging or dangling on a tree. God don't like that. Did you read your Old Testament? If you're to hang somebody, God said that's a curse and it'll defile the land. Nothing should be hanging or 
dangling? Jesus Christ had to hang and dangle. You might say, why is that? Because the tree is supposed to be not a bad thing, it's a good thing in your Bible. And we're going to cover that later on. But there are plenty of verses where tree is likened to producing fruit. People likened to trees and we're producing fruit and etc. And then God, He doesn't want something else to be a part of that. But see, that serpent is hanging and dangling. So Jesus Christ had to hang and dangle on that tree. To replace what the devil did. Look at John chapter 3. What, verse 14. Verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Right? The serpent on a pole. Right? Even so must the what? Son of man be lifted up. See? There's a connection with the serpent and the tree. But that's the reason why you get your... Uh, weird conspiracy stuff, the Satanism stuff, and even in your health organization, what they have? A serpent on a pole. What do they want to do? They want to counterfeit Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus did that for us and Satan's like, no, let me replace mine somehow. See that? The world wants to produce their own medicine, but it's a poisonous medicine system. There's no doubt. If you study the pharmacy system and all that, then there's a lot of it that's crooked, that's rotten, and even some stuff that is demonic, let's be honest. But see, God, He produced natural remedy for a natural tree. See that? But anyways, right here, we see that the serpent is tied to a tree. A serpent is tied to a tree. Is a serpent tied to a tree? Look at the book of Exodus. Exodus. The book of Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4. Is a serpent somehow tied to wood, a piece of wood or a tree? Yes. Exodus chapter 4, verse 2. Exodus chapter 4, verse 2. Why did God do this miracle? He's seen it as something connected. A tree and a serpent. Yeah, I think, I think there's a very good high chance this serpent was somehow tied to a tree, connected to it. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Look at Exodus chapter 4, verse 2. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. See that? Piece of stick, verse 3. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. How about that? What was the Lord trying to teach Moses? The Lord was trying to teach Moses something. When he does his miracles, he don't do it without an explanation. All righty then. So we see how Satan is tied to a tree. We can see too many verses on that. Or the snake, the serpent is tied to the tree. Jesus Christ tied to that as well to replace it. Now, let's look at Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Verse 24. Mark chapter 8 verse 24. One of my uh, members, who, uh, one of the Abishai, said, what does this mean, Pastor? It, mean, it could mean this, 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 this. I'm like, oh, maybe, you know, maybe it could mean this, you know. But, you know, got me curious, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to study that first. Mark 8, 24. All right. I had a couple Abishais trying to throw me their theories on this one. Mark 8, 24. But we'll start at verse 23. Jesus was healing a blind man, but he didn't heal him immediately. Now we know God, when He does His miracles, like with Moses and everything else, He has a picture, a reason behind it. I mean, the miracle of the water coming out of the rock, uh, God took it seriously that He said, Moses, you can't go in the promised land because you didn't follow my instructions on that. Because He had a reason behind everything. And then Paul later showed that the reason behind that miracle of the water coming out of the rock was because it was supposed to picture Jesus Christ. So see, God has a picture or a spiritual reason behind everything, every miracle. If you believe that about God, rather than Jesus being a weakling, all right, because Jesus, when he healed that blind man of his sight, he didn't heal him immediately. He let him see something else and then healed him immediately. Look at Mark 8, 24, 23. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. So notice over here, 
that the blind man, he didn't get his eyes healed completely. What he was seeing is men, but they look like trees walking. So then why would Jesus Christ do that? That doesn't make sense. Why would Jesus Christ do that with the tree? Because here's the thing, because even evolutionists, and thank God we don't believe in evolution, amen? But even evolutionists, to get rid of biblically speaking, evolutionists believe that trees is a lower form of life and that mankind came from trees eventually, right? So see, they connect mankind with trees. Why? Because scientifically, and Richard Dawkins thought that we disproved God. Why? Because if you look at the DNA of trees or of vegetation and nature and life with human beings, and then you look at the DNA, we can see we all come from a common ancestor and it matches a hierarchical the hierarchy system of science, and he thought he disproved God. No, he was, Richard Dawkins was showing you a greater revelation from the scripture. He was just being doctrinal and he didn't know it. You know what the doctrinal reason behind it is? God sees man's life connected to tree, but it's a lower life system, the trees. He, uh, he, why? You notice that his six days of creation, he made higher forms of life. Tree fish, birds, animals, and then man as a finale. But uh, we're going to look at some interesting verses right here. We're going to look at some interesting verses. We're going to look at the book of Deuteronomy chapter 20. Deuteronomy chapter 20. There is no doubt that man is likened to tree. That's the spiritual reason behind it. Man is likened to tree. Now, let me tell you something crazy, all right? This might be crazy, but I think it's very, very uh, interesting and it has some truth, okay? Within God's creation, it follows a pattern. It follows a pattern. So then mankind, the pattern, look, we have a head, we got hair, we got arms, and we got a body, and we got legs. If tree is a lower form of life, man has a head and hair, arms, body, legs. What do you th see? God's creation all have a similar pattern. Why? It's a common designer. It's not proving common ancestry and evolution. It's proving a common designer. Every artist, when you look at all their different paintings, you can see similar or common patterns or traits. See that? It proves intelligent design. It doesn't prove evolution. So thank you, Richard Dawkins, for giving us a greater revelation from Scripture. We thank you, sir. All right, look at Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 19. Did you read this? When thou shalt besiege a city a long time in making war against it to take it, thou shalt not <coughs> destroy the trees thereof by forcing an axe against them. For thou mayest eat of them, and thou shalt not cut them down. Why? Why are trees important? For the tree of the field is what? Man's life. Woo, there's something connected with man's life and tree, or man with tree. How about that? The scripture is very, very interesting. Uh, did, did you read uh, Psalms chapter 1? Did you read John chapter 15? Did you read Matthew chapter 7? Mankind is likened to trees. If you live for the Lord, you'll b bring forth precious fruit. And if you're not, then you're going to be like that branch that withers and die out. Just like what? Like cut off. Just like the devil. And you have the fall, just like Lucifer took a fall, right? He took a fall from the fall of Lucifer, right? Fell from heaven. He fell down, and God says, down to the ground. Just like that branch gets cut off, what does it do? It falls down to the ground, and, and it lives on the ground, just like the thorn, just like the bramble bush, etc. Woo! No wonder Satan has an infatuation with trees, and he hates you. Why? You're that successful tree. He's not. He's the one on the ground. He's the one that's going to lick off the dust off your feet. No wonder the Bible says the serpent will be bruised in the head. Why? He's on the ground and Jesus Christ's foot on top of that head. And guess what? You're going to sit with Jesus Christ reigning. The serpent is under your feet. No wonder he hates you. He has an infatuation with trees. So what does he want to do? Because he's a tree. I'll tell you what he wants to do because 
uh, he's a tree. He wants you to grovel underneath this tree, bow down and worship it. Go to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 3. Jeremiah 3. Jeremiah chapter 3. No wonder he loves nature worship. No wonder he loves it when mankind bows down to a tree. Because what does he want? He doesn't want mankind to be on top. He wants man to be on the bottom. Look at Jeremiah. Man, that scripture is something. That scripture is something. <coughs> Jeremiah chapter 3. And then notice what the Bible says about uh, the tree right here concerning about Israel. We're going to look at Jeremiah chapter 3, and then we'll read verse, let's see here. What's a good one? Uh, let's see. Yes, verse 6. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord said also unto me, In the days of Josiah the king, hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. So notice right here that under every green tree, there's fornication going on. There's sex going on. Of course, uh, it might not tie with Eve what she did with Satan, so we'll just bypass that one, all right? So it might not have anything to do with that, you know? It's just a wild guess, you know? It's just weird stuff, you know? So may may maybe, it's, maybe there's nothing to it, all right? So we'll just bypass that one. You can ask Brother Sean after he dreams that night, and he'll try to connect something, maybe. <laughs> but you'll notice here that uh, under every green tree they sinned against the Lord. And then you'll notice the same thing at Jeremiah chapter 2. You'll notice the same thing at Jeremiah chapter 2. And then you'll notice that they sinned with the trees. They sinned with the trees at Jeremiah chapter 2. And then uh, let's see right here. They followed after other gods at verse 11, right? They followed after other gods at verse 11. And then at verse, let's see here, uh, verse 20, verse 20. For of old time I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands, and thou saidest, I will not transgress when upon every high hill and under every green tree thou wanderest, playing the harlot. So there's fornication, there's sex going on, which is weird. Go to Jeremiah 10. Go to Jeremiah chapter 10. Where did Christmas come from, huh? Where did Christmas come from? Why do, people, why do people bow down in front of a tree to get their gift right there? It originated from paganism, actually. Jeremiah chapter 10. Notice at verse 3. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with... That's a Christmas tree. <laughs> nails and with hammers that it move not. See that? They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. Uh, for as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. So notice right here that the heathen at verses 2 through 6, that they were cutting down trees, decorating it. Why? Because it connects it to worshiping it, to idolatry. Uh, for some of you who didn't know that, um, look at Isaiah 40, Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Where do images come from? You have to cut down a tree. They were worshiping devils, the Bible said. And why is the devil's origin likened to tree right here where they have to build it? Look at Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Of course, Bible study is boring. We all learned that, right? You know, we've learned from the past 10 years, Bible study is so boring and you want to be at different churches, right? People talking nice and smooth to you and smile all day long. Playing CCM music, you know, so that you can find something worth living because studying the Bible is just so boring right now. I think we should close Bible study right now and then start rapping, right, Brother Robert? Maybe you should come up here. You know, I think I'm wasting time right now. Let's close our Bible study. It's so boring right now. 
Now, why am I talking like this? Because I want you to get common sense in your brain, your fried up brains right here, that Bible is interesting, it's fun, and God can enlighten your understanding, and that why do churches have to have fried brain cells? By We need to have a rock concert to make it fun. Now, look at Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. And then look at verse... 19, uh, verse 18. To whom then will he liken God? See? People are trying to put God into something. Verse 19. The workman melteth a graven image, idols, and the goldsmith spreadeth it over with gold and casteth silver chains. It's kind of like a Christmas tree, right? Those silver chains, gold, etc. But let's see if a tree is involved in that. Verse 20. He that is so impoverished that he hath no oblation chooseth a tree that will not rot. He seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. How about that? No wonder Satan has some sort of infatuation with trees, idolatry, tree worship. How about that? They're all tied somehow. They're tied to fornication and they're tied to idolatry right here. Oh, by the way, uh, did you read Revelation chapter 2? Uh, what did the Bible say? The Bible says uh, that Jezebel, she is what? Uh, fornication and idolatry. For some weird reason, fornication and idolatry is always tied together. And guess what? You betcha there's a tree involved. There is a tree involved. How about that? There is a tree involved. Idolatry. All right. So let's just put idols right here. That way I can have more room for the picture. Now, <coughs> why is fornication tied to idolatry, uh, worshiping idols? You'll notice at the book of Jeremiah we read that they were having sex with strangers. There was prostitution under trees. Is that true? Why, yes, there is. They were doing that back then. Uh, if you have the Ruckman Reference Bible... It will tell you a lot of interesting things about the history of the oak. So it's titled History of the Oak, and it's in Dr. Upman's appendices. So let me find that quickly right there. And then he'll tell you all the history of the trees that are tied to idolatry. And guess what? You betcha that there is sex involved over here. So uh, if, uh, let's see right here. Let's look at page, if you have a Ruckman Reference Bible, 1675. Look at 1675. 1675, and then, of course, this old man, you know, he didn't know what he was talking about, obviously. You know, he must have been drunk at night when he wrote this. Look at page 1675 in your Ruckman Reference Bible, and my, 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 look what you read right here. Notice that uh, we can look down at the last paragraph on page 1675. A tree spirit was responsible for sun, rain, and growth of crops. The maypole made cattle and women fertile. May Day is Walpurgis night, and when little May Rose goes door to door carrying a small May tree to get gifts. In France, this is Father May, the same as Green George in the Slavic nations, and green leaves in England. Remember the Bible says they had fornication under every green tree. The sunflower, a little girl in a wagon in Thuringia. It is the little leaf man in Hesia, little uh, Whitsuntide man in Bavaria, the quack in Switzerland, the Whitsuntide lout in Hanover, the leaf king in Wur Württemberg, the lazy man. The female May Queen is in France and England, and the Schutzen Liesen is in Germany. The Queen of the May Hunt is Diana, goddess of the woodlands. Uh, let's keep reading down. The Greek, uh, skip down, the Greek Artemis was also a patron goddess of cattle, herdsmen, and physical life. Hunters crowned hunting dogs at Diana's festival. She was supposed to hear the prayers of women in travail. In a grove, a woman could conceive a virgin birth by a god. Monarchs in Egypt came through this female line. No one knew who their father was. It was said, she who is joined to Ammon, she shall reign in righteousness in all the earth. One prayer to her said, my soul is hers, my heart is hers, my will is hers, my crown is hers, that she may guide the souls of the living. 
Thebes was governed by female popes. Maidens were appointed to serve Ammon as concubines of the virgin god Pallas. None were virgins. They were temple prostitutes. They became public harlots after years of fornication in seminaries with priests. This calling to be a prostitute began at the age of 12. In Dahomey, West Africa, every fourth woman was a religious prostitute. They were married to a god, so he caused their sexual excesses. Uh, skip down. Jupiter Ball controlled lightning. Vestal virgins had to t tend to an ever-burning flame for him, like Kennedy. Jupiter was connected with electromagnetic forces. Both Greeks and Italians associated Zeus with Jupiter and thunderstorms. Uh, if we keep reading down here, let's see... An everlasting fire was found in all Catholic monasteries in Ireland, India, Persia, and the Balkans. St. Bridget in Ireland has her church in Kildare, the church of the oak tree. Bridget means bride. You'll notice right here that there's a lot of sexual thing going on. Uh, let's see. Let me read from the Celtic paganism right here. They mention about... Uh, Celtic paganism, that there were grotesque things done. The Druids, you know what they were called? Druids, basically the translation, for some of you who didn't know, it means oak men. Oh. So there was something really... Dem there was no doubt Druids were demonic if you read their history. If you read about origins of Halloween as well. There was no doubt about it. And they're connected to a tree. Just remember that. For some weird reason, they're connected to trees. You know what's also interesting? In Sanskrit, druid literally translates to what? Tree knowledge. Wow. Like, just like the no tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Of course, it's all coincidence, of course, you know. The recognizable fertility of trees to the Celts by virtue of their abundant fruit crops every year also led to the onset of spring being celebrated in sacred groves. Such celebrations often consisted a man and woman having sexual intercourse within a sacred grove as they saw their fertility as being linked to the fertility of trees. They also mentioned about, uh, in turn, this explains the name of the goddess of the sacred groves of the Celts, Nemetona, which means goddess of the sacred grove. So notice that it's all tied to something sexual. It's all tied to something sexual, this tree. And it's all connected to idols, this tree. And, uh, you know, Eve, you know, what did she do? She basically did not worship God. She put an idol in front of her, and there was no fornication obviously involved. Or maybe there was, because there's too many connections with uh, idolatry, with devils, and sex. For some weird reason. For some weird reason. Isn't it very strange? Isn't it very strange? Of course, it's all a coincidence. There's, um, you know, all of this is just ridiculous. It's just fairy tale stuff. But why did the Bible say about the groves? Uh, remember the book of Deuteronomy? Leave the tree alone, but not the groves. The groves, he said, tear that down. Why? Groves are connected to idols. Uh, we don't have to turn to those scriptures. You can look it up yourself, right? Did you read the book of Kings, right? When they thrust down and destroyed the idols, they destroyed the groves. Why? Because that idol is connected to a grove. Why? That grove is something man-made. It's not God-made. It's man-made. You, you want to set a bunch of uh, little small trees over there. Why? So that you can worship it with your idols and have sex over there. It's a lot of dark, disturbing stuff. And uh, we see right here that men are likened to trees. And then the devil, what he wanted to do is put man at the bottom and to worship the tree instead. That's what the devil wanted. But uh, there are some other interesting things. Uh, here we go. All right. So 
I want you to turn to the book of, this is where now we get to the fun part. So now we're going to go to Isaiah 34. We're going to go to Isaiah 34, and I want you to go to Matthew 13. Isaiah 34, and then I want you to go to Matthew 13. And then I want you to go to the book of Daniel, the book of Daniel, chapter 4, chapter 4, Isaiah 34, Daniel 4, and Matthew 13. Boy, you turn to a lot of scriptures in this Bible study. Oh, yeah, because we're Bible believers. We're not contemporary Christian worshipers and with a worship service. We're not Hillsong. We are not, uh, we are not, uh, this is your day. TV program, Benny Hinn. We are not uh, discover the champion in you. We are not that kind of church. We're not Lake Wood, all right? We're not Lake Wood. I don't know why a tree is connected to that church. Maybe because it's tied to a city, Lake Wood, but uh, nah, I'm just throwing stuff now, right? <laughs> but anyways, let's look at uh, let's look at some interesting things here. Look at Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Now, look at these devils here. Look at verse 4, verse 4. <laughs> and when he sowed, some seeds fell, seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. All right, who are those birds likened to? The devils. Look at Matthew chapter 13, verse 19. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the what? Wicked one. That's the devil, all right? So the devils are likened to the fowls, all right? So these birds, there's no doubt, they're devils. Now, you're the tree, amen? You're the tree, and God wants to, you to produce fruit. Look at Matthew 13, but this is something bad's going on with this tree here. You're growing as a church. Amen. Okay, Matthew chapter 13, verse 32. Which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becometh a tree. So see, that's the Christian faith growing, and man is likened to tree, right? The Christian faith is growing up into a tree, but look what interferes. So that the birds of there come and lodge in the branches thereof. Those devils are coming in. Why? The devils want to... These devils want to go inside the tree right here. Why? They want to interfere with your growth. They want to interfere with your growth. They want to do something about it. Hmm. I wonder why devils are infatuated with trees. Why do they want to go over there? Makes you wonder... Well, let's look at Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. There's no doubt man is likened to tree. Why? Nebuchadnezzar, a man, is likened to a tree. Look at Daniel chapter 4. The Bible says in verse 11, The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven. Just remember that part. The tree was a height that reached all the way to heaven. And notice that what God said at verse 14, He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit, let the beast get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. Look what Daniel interprets that. He says at verse 20, The tree that thou sawest which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven and the sight thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king. See, the man Nebuchadnezzar is likened to the tree. Why do devils like tree? If the tree is representing man right here, notice that God, what does he want to do with mankind? He wants to bring them up to heaven with him. And notice that this man's tree was height was reaching up to heaven. Did we forget the book of Ezekiel? What was Satan as the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? His height reached up to heaven. Isaiah 14, 14, Lucifer said, I will ascend. I will reach the heights of the clouds. He wants to go, he wants to go high. He wants to go up. 
<clears throat> but guess what? Mankind is being that one. So Satan wants to, those devils like that. Yeah. So guess what? They want to go up. They want to go up on the height. They have an infatuation with height. Uh, let's look at the book. Uh, your hand is Isaiah 34. Keep it there. Let's look at 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel. You never heard of UFOs on top of trees or angelic beings on top of trees? See those? Uh, so why would the devils not be interested to go on top of trees? Did you, uh, did you know about that one? Look at that, 2 Samuel 5. 2 Samuel 5. And then, by the way, go to the book of Zechariah. Go to the book of Zechariah. Now, your hand is still at Isaiah 34. Keep it there, all right? So every place else you can lose except Zechariah, 2 Samuel, and the book of Isaiah 34, all right? All right, let's look at the book of uh, Zechariah. And then uh, I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of uh, Zechariah chapter 1, Zechariah chapter 1, all right? Now go to 2 Samuel 5, 2 Samuel 5. Look what the Bible says right here. Look at verse 23, verse 23. And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, Thou shalt not go up, but fetch a compass behind them, and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. Now look at this. And let it be when thou hearest the sound, the sound of a going in the where? Tops of the mulberry trees. Those are angelic beings. Why? Because it's the Lord. Then that thou shalt bestir thyself, for then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host. That's God's army, His angelic army, on the top of trees. Uh, the tree whose height reached to the heaven, right? Now, look at, uh, if you don't believe me, that there's, no, there's no angelic activity on top of trees, you know? Well, the sound of a UFO right there, right? Unidentified flying object, angelic beings. But look at Zechariah 1. All right, here's proof of a UFO on top of a tree. Uh, Santa Claus on his sled on top of a Christmas tree. You wonder why. But anyways... Um, but I got a bigger one than that. Go to Zechariah 1, all right? We'll, we'll continue on, all right? All these things, by the way, you know, they're just, um, they're just stuff, you know, I just throw in there, all right? Just stuff in there. Nothing for you to research. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 8. And I saw by night, and behold, a man riding upon a red horse, and he stood among the myrtle trees. How about that? Look at verse 10. And the man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said. How about that? Look at verse 11. And they answered the angel of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees. How about that? I told you so. There's angelic activity on top of the trees. Remember when Satan said, I walk to and fro the earth walking up and down in it? You know what that meant? He was going up and down the trees. No, I don't believe you. you read your Bible. Verse 11. And they answered the angel of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees and said, We have walked to and fro through the earth. Right, Boom! Right there. Look at verse 10. And the man that stood among the myr myrtle trees answered and said, These are they whom the Lord has sent to walk to and fro through the earth. And where were they? On the top of the trees. Woo! How about that? No wonder those devils like to go on top of the trees. Why? They're because they just want to do what those angels did, the angels of the Lord did, going on top of the trees. So then the devils are trying to get back from their fall, right? Those fallen angels are trying to get back from their fall. They have an infatuation. And of course, it has no connection when you look at a Christmas tree. It looks like some kind of Illuminati pyramid right there. And the, because uh, the pyramids, they connect to the stars and heaven. Of course, there's no coincidence with that one. And those trees have to be triangular for some weird reason. No, no coincidence, of course. Now, Isaiah 34. Oh, I forgot one more passage. Psalms 8. <laughs> Psalms 8. Psalms 8. Go to Psalms 8. Psalms 8. You ever wondered why... Get your, ready for your mind to get blown, ready? You ever wondered why on top of a Christmas tree they have to put an angel or a star? Oh, that's good, brother. And it's only those two things, and I, I don't know why, you know. It's, of course, it's a coincidence, right? And they call those tree toppers. Oh, man! <laughs> That's 
Why, why, why on top? Satan, see that? If man is a tree, what does Satan want to do? Satan wants to be on top of mankind. Why? Because angels are above men. But when those angels go down on the ground and they fall on the ground with Lucifer, then man is higher than the angels. And boy, don't they hate that. Psalms 8, Psalms 8, verse 5, uh, verse 4, verse 4. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. Wow. How about that? Man, that's something else, right? So those angels want, to, those fallen angels, I want to be on top of man. So that's why they like to be a tree topper. Put a star or an angel on top of a Christmas tree. That's where the pagans get their ideas from, right? And those devils love those pagans teaching that kind of stuff, practicing that kind of stuff, right? The, all of this comes from something. All right, now Isaiah 34. Here's the fun part right here. All right, you hear about the Bohemian Grove. They do strange rituals, sex. In the Bohemian Grove, of course there's no coincidence, right? Just like the pagans back then, in the groves, they do sex, they do sacrifice and idolatry. Boy, that's just weird stuff. And for some weird reason, their favorite animal is an owl. It's a bird. You know what the Bible says about the owl? That those are devils. And guess what? Those owls are not going to be where the devils want, in the grove or the bohemian grove or in the trees. They go where the thorns, the bramble bush are down here, where hell comes out. Did you get what I just said? Did you just miss that, what I just said? Dude, here, let me repeat that. I don't think you got that. Remember, the devils, they like to go on the height of the trees, right? That's why they love this Bohemian Grove stuff. They like to be on top of trees. They like this paganism on top of trees. They have an infatuation with an owl. Why? Because those are devils. But you know what God said about those owls? Those devils, they're going to be down below where hell is. Not up there. They're going to be down below where hell is. And it ain't going to be a fru fru tree of fruition. It's going to be a dried up thorn or bramble bush. Wait, remember what God's curse was for Satan? You're going to go down on the ground. Amen. Did you forget Ezekiel, oh, man, uh, Ezekiel 34? Those trees went down with Satan to hell. There are trees in hell. Why? So God, he makes them become what? Bramble bush, thorns. Look, 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 Isaiah. Isaiah 34. Man, that book is something else, right? All right, now this is hell. There's no doubt about it. Verse 9. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. Well, that sounds like hell. It shall not be quenched day nor uh, night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. Well, that's hell. But if you know your Bible, that's hell on earth, right? At the millennium. Now look at this now. Look at this. Look at this. Verse 11. But the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it. The owl also. There is your bohemian grove. Right in hell, and the raven shall dwell in it. But look at this one, verse 13. And thorns wow. shall come up in her palaces, nettles, and brambles in the fortresses thereof. Remember the book of Judges? That story was obviously a coincidence in the book of Judges where he said the bramble bush is... Abimelech, a type of the Antichrist, and when you worship that bramble bush, fire will come out and devour you. Wow. Let's close with a word of prayer. This is all a coincidence, of course. All right, let's dismiss it now. It's too crazy. Heavenly Father, I pray that tonight's teaching has been a blessing to the hearers and made us open our eyes more to why the devil's workings, the elites, and paganism, everything else, has an infatuation with trees. And I pray that we will not be deceived or fall into its demonic devices. And uh, we thank you so much for the truth of thy word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh, by the way, I forgot one more note. Dr. Up, is it still recording? All right, I forgot one more note. Dr. Upton mentions in his appendix, which is a, a, a coincidence, of course, you know, what the pagans taught. So appendix four, what does he say here? He says, uh, right here, the Chinese said, some spirits of trees are serpents or bulls. Wow. 
And of course, a serpent is not tied to a tree. But there were some Chinese who worship trees where they say there are spirits of serpents and bulls in there. The devil is, remember, a bull and a serpent. Wow. 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 All right. We're done. Go home. <laughs>